Hey guys, uh, so today I'm going to be doing a really quick tutorial on creating a, a polarized filter testing device. Um, essentially, one of our customers called in and asked if we had those anymore. We don't sell them anymore, but they're actually really, really easy to make. The use of the product is actually for uh, single vision lenses that are polarized and tinted. Um, a lot of the times when you have a sill power, you will have to turn your lens and it's not going to be at 180 degrees um, and it's, it's going to be a little, little bit tilted. What you want to ensure though is that your polarized filter doesn't tilt along with the actual axis of the lens. So you, you always want your polarized filter to be at uh, 180 and 90. And so this device, which is essentially just a thin lens, uh, will be able to ensure that the axis of the polarization is within tolerance, which means it's within about 5 to 10 degrees of the actual um, uh, uh, of, of, of 180 degrees. So what I have here is a, it's a one millimeter lens uh, made in Japan. It's one of the ones that we carry. Um, one millimeter, 70 millimeter wide, 55 millimeter uh, in, in B measurement. Right now we have a uh, film over on top and on the back of it, which is actually pretty good for us to work with. Uh, for those of you that aren't really familiar with working with the polarized lenses, polarize, polarization occurs and it's usually a um, almost like vertical blinds. And that'll, that, what that does is it blocks out horizontal wavelengths. Uh, when I tilt it to a 90 degrees so that the polarization is now no longer uh, parallel but perpendicular to each other, then uh, the lens darkens. And so as I turn slightly, you can see it through it a little bit better. And as I turn back to 90 degrees or, or perpendicular to the, to the polarization of the lens or the, the frame, then it darkens again. So this is actually, it's kind of cool. It's how circular polarizers work for cameras. Um, but you'll notice that again, it darkens. All right, just go online and see if you can find a protractor just like this. I just went online, went on Google search, uh, searched uh, protractors, and then just uh, filtered by size. And so this is a two megapixel and above image size. Uh, what you want is also a protractor that has the lines that go inside, because obviously I can't, I can't work with the numbers here. And a lot of protractors that are printed don't have the little lines on the inside right here. All right. Um, so uh, take your lens, work with it, not uh, so that so that's sitting um, like so, but on its end like this. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you can really use a ruler, but sometimes I go a little bit overboard. I'm using a vernier caliper right here, um, and just measure the size of your lens. All right. For this, I'm getting a 71, roughly 71 millimeter lens, and so what we want is to bisect the lens itself, just divide it in half equally. And so 71 divided by 2 is 35.5. So you just mark off the 35.5 on one side, mark off 35.5 on the other side. So what you end up with is something similar to this. All right. The next thing that you want to do is to take uh, a compass. So what the compass does is you just draw a little circle all the way around. Dot from the center. Try to get as close to the edges uh, to the lens as you can. Once you've dotted that, then uh, what I'm using right here is actually not a pen, but a, a lead pencil. And all the lead pencil is really gonna do, it won't be able to draw on the lens, but it will be able to scratch a circle uh, on the actual uh, uh, film that's covering the lens, all right? Um, from here, what you would do is line up the lens to the actual uh, protractor that we've printed out. Now this lens is actually really nice because I'm actually using a two base lens and it's quite thin. So if I press down on it, I can actually get it flat and it's nice and comfortable. Um, if you're using anything like a four base or an eight base lens, that's, it'll be a lot more curved and you're gonna have a little bit more difficulty drawing these lines. Uh, on top of that, if it's thicker, then you're not gonna be able to bend it flat. All right, so what I really like about these lenses uh, is that they maintain, they don't warp, even if, even though it's a, a two base and I press against it, they, it will almost always remain a two base and you don't get any warping. Um, but essentially from here, 
I line it up so that it's at the 180 line. The dot that's in the center of this lens, uh, again, all you needed to do was take the ruler at 55 divided by 2, and this one was 27.5, I believe. Um, once that's lined up, then just use the sharp point and mark 5 degrees. And so from here, you can see from the side here, 5 degrees is here. That will correspond with this line. And so we're working down here and it will be roughly about there. So I'm just going to get away, get in the way of the camera for a second while I mark this. Just like so. All right. And then you just do it on the other side. Again, from zero starting here, you want to get to five degrees, follow along the line, and you're going to get to about here. All right. Now, um, flip the lens to the other side and repeat the same process. Five degrees, five degrees, one and two. And you'll notice that I just have very light markings on either side. From here, I just need to take a flat surface and I'm going to get in the way, in the way of this camera lens again just to draw these lines. one line another just like that and then on the other side Finally on the other. Probably would have been better to use a ruler, but this is what I have on hand right now. And there we go. And you know that this is essentially five degrees off of the main central line. At this point, um, we're pretty much finished the tester. Uh, right now, I'm following along the central line to, to, to ensure that it's 180. If I go by the top line that runs down this way, I'll shift my lens slightly, and you'll notice that it does get a little bit lighter as I turn it, all right? Uh, if I turn it the other way, the same thing happens. You'll notice that the, that the lenses go a little bit, or you can see through it a little bit better. And so this is actually a really simple device that will allow you to determine whether your polarization is within tolerance. Uh, as you can see, we, we use five degrees as tolerance either way. And all you need to do is set it up so that the line is center, five degrees off, or five degrees off the other way. And then you can see the actual polarization and see if it's okay. So very, very simple device. Um, cost effective, literally takes five minutes to do. And it will definitely help you out when you're working with a um, uh, cylinder and, 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 and if the axis isn't exactly at 180. This will allow you to ensure that even though your sill power is not at 180, your actual polarization needs to be. All you really need to do at this point is scratch the lines in so that they're a little darker. You can remove the film and you're good to go. That ends the tutorial.